Right, here's my outlaw folks, and for those of you with sharp eyes, you might wonder what this is here, just nestled under the body. This is my uh, custom sw rear sway bar, or anti-roll bar, if you want to call it that. Now, uh, when I first bought this car, I could see hints of it lifting the front right-hand wheel, and that was just running a stock motor on 3S LiPo, so I was like, mm, I wasn't very keen on that at all, and uh, when it became brushless soon after, the problem just became more profound. Um, that's something I simply didn't want. So effectively, it then becomes just two-wheel drive. So uh, let me explain. Just for those who don't know, the, the common way differential works on cars is to spin the easiest wheel on that axle. So with one wheel off the ground, which is the front right-hand wheel in this case, its neighbouring wheel, the front left-hand wheel, will not receive any drive, basically rendering the car to be just two-wheel drive on the rear. Um, and of course, driving the front offside wheel. So, pointless. And to be fair, it's difficult to control at high speeds. But then you ask yourself this question, hang on a second, I bought a four-wheel drive car here. What on earth's going on? It's, it's down on its potential performance. Now, unfortunately, this is a trait of having a solid axle on the rear. And owing to its design, it will simply, there's a solid axle. It'll simply want to basically twist the car across in a rotation. So uh, this is called torque twist, and um, which is where the drive of the rear axle basically, as I just said, I'm just trying to rotate the car around to the left, hence why we see the front right-hand wheel leave the ground. Now the cure for this, it's very, very easy, and one which I've proved works quite well. Um, on a few of those, which I did a few, uh, a few months back. The uh, stock sway bar, this thing, it's pretty pointless really in my regard. It's, uh, it doesn't do much at all. It's, there's too much twist. There's too much twist along this bar, and the purchase point is just two tiny grub screws in there. So you've only got literally three mil of face trying to put an action across this bar. It, it's not enough, so it needs something else, I think. Um, I've made that, fitted it, and it's absolutely it's cured the problem. This wheel now just doesn't need the ground at all. So I'm here today uh, with another outlaw, which I'm going to. Uh, in the middle of uh, doing a conversion on actually into a short course truck so i'm going to fit an anti-roll bar to that one now and uh, i'll show you how simple it is really to actually do the bar and the installation um maybe other fixed axle uh, models as well out there if it can be applied okay folks now then first off we'll need a three mil stainless rod then we're going to need a sway bar kit of some sort. This is actually a Kyosho Inferno. And uh, I chose this one probably because the rows, the ball joints that you see here, they're actually three millimeter and they're a perfect fit then for the stainless rod. So we'll need you'll need a kit of that of some sort. You'll also need two 30 mil M3 bolts. These are actually 35s, but you need a minimum of 30 mil really has to cover going all the way through the rear trading arm and all the different spaces on it. So you need that. You'll need four washers, four of those, two lock nuts, and an array of Allen keys to suit. Depends if you're going to use Phillips heads or whatever, because you won't need Allen keys then. Every modeler has probably got one of these, so you'll need that for the little M5 nuts. And to actually bend the bar, even an array of pliers, perhaps. So I'll explain more the use of those a little bit later on. Okay. Now to begin, we'll have to measure the stainless rod, which is going to be travelling across the chassis. So in order to do that, take our stainless rod, let's we'll slot it through here to the other side, so it's equal. Lengths about there. Pinch it, slide it out, keep a hold of it with your finger. And you want to put a 90 degree bend in this now, so you're using your pliers. So you should end up with this, something like that. With our stainless rod now bent to 90 degrees, our next little job is to remove these two small bolts here which hold on the link arms. So we'll go ahead and do that now. It's only a small nut on the other side. Okay, so with our link arms released now, 
can see how much it relies on those actually for stability. Look at that. So we'll have to now thread in our stabilizer bar all the way through here now. This can be quite tricky. Actually try and get these back in there. That's all the way through now, as you can see. So he's ready for bending. Now comes the tricky part, folks, which is bending this side of the stainless rod now to match the other side. So with the protruding through, you don't really want to bend it against this plastic chassis for obvious reasons. So using a pair of uh, small pointy plies, you've got to hold where it pops out and then bend over the tail so it matches the same 90 degree bend as the other side. So I'll place that on there. Like so. Yeah. Now then with that bent across, you have to match it. See if it matches the other side, which it does. So I'm gonna drag them see if one was shooting off another angle, then you'll need to straighten up of course, because they both need to be in line with each other. On the side of the training arms. Anyway, now we turn our attention to the uh, the stabilizer kit which we have. I'm only interested in these parts. So um, there's a little rose joints, completely hard little tiny ball joint. The ball joint will go on the stain on the stainless rod and of course the bottom rose joint will screw into the training arm. Alright, I put the ball joint on now on the rod, just nipped up the little tiny grub screw for the time being. So I'm gonna stay the washer as well on the uh, 30 or 35 mil bolt in this case. So I'll slide that through now and he's going to go through the sixth hole on the training arm, which is halfway. I've got the wash on there, basically just in case, should the uh, plastic rose and one day ever decide to stretch and pop off, and then uh, it won't work at all. All right, so I've, uh, I've secured this on here now. Um, all that remains now is to trim down your new sway bar to a, a length which you deem suitable and of course repeat the process for the other side. So uh, it's as simple as that guys, it's, it's really easy to do. The rear training arms can be regarded as levers, so the furthest point away which is here from the hinge point which is just here, this has the greatest influence over your sway bar, agreed? It's, so it's easier for you to push up your training arm at the rear than it is to push it up from here at the front. However, there's a flip side to this, which we must consider, and this is the rigidity of the stainless rod, which you're using. Yes, we can set the bolt back in towards the shock, so it does have a, a greater influence on the sway bar when it's connected, but the further along the sway bar this ball joint goes, the less rigid it becomes in relation to its hinge point, which is here. So therefore, the less control it will have over the axle, and inevitably, your control over your car. So we have to find a happy medium, and uh, hence why I chose to put mine midway on the sixth hole. I thought it was a nice starting point, and from testing it with the sway bar parallel to the training arm, it resulted in a massive improvement over stock, but still very slightly it began to lift that front white wheel, so it's still no good. So all I simply did, I just moved the ball joints slightly further forward, and I used the holes here as a reference point. So originally it was directly above, and now I just put it above the fifth hole. Um, it was as simple as that. Um, simple guy, basically. So, still keeping that bolt in its original place. And all we've done now, so we've still got a, that effective lever, sorry, the effective input from the training arm, but now we've arrived at a more rigid point on the sway bar. So, in other words, the ball joint moves back, the flexibility goes up, but rigidity goes down. Move the ball joint further forwards, and the flexibility reduces and rigidity goes up. Therefore, control goes up. So the torque twist now has to fight even harder against the bar, but at this point I might add, the, the bar had overcome the force of the torque twist on my other outlaw, and it does now, it keeps all four wheels on the ground, and hey presto, success. Now I hope that's been helpful to those of you who are looking into doing this. 
I've just seen it's really simple to do and it's worked wonders for this car, it really has. It's planted on road and off road but still has enough given the suspension. So I found it set at this point, it's not constrained the car, it's helped cornering, it doesn't lean so much as it did. And the best bit of course is that it keeps all four wheels in contact with the ground so you've got maximum effective drive. Um, now bear in mind, I've not tried this set at any point along, along the train line, anywhere else at all. I think I've hit the jackpot really with it straight up, I even set at midpoint. So, seems I showed amazing results to begin with. I don't see any reason to try it elsewhere, to be honest. So, um, that's it folks. Um, any questions and queries which you may have over this, then please don't hesitate to pop them in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, careful now, and thanks for watching.